Greetings and blessings upon you all. Welcome to Faith Chapel Presbyterian Church's worship. Way back in the beginnings of Faith Chapel, they worshiped beneath a tree. And so we gather together today to worship simply and wonderfully. So bring yourselves together, gather in and prepare thyselves to worship our Lord. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I seek the grace of God, and my cup runneth over. I seek the will of God, and my cup runneth over. I seek the strength of God, and my cup runneth over. How generous is God's love. So much the world cannot contain it. The Lord is my shepherd and I lack nothing. Gracious God, in love you open wide the doors and welcome us into your presence, saints and sinners alike. We come with joy to meet you here, to eat and drink at your table, to taste and see your goodness, to celebrate your grace and mercy in our lives. May your spirit inspire our praise and thanksgiving, our prayers and petitions, as we worship together in your presence. In the name of Jesus Christ, our host and Lord. Amen.
The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. God's Promises So we're continuing on with God's promises. Last week we went over how God's promises can be both blessing and curse. Although, if we're following God's commands, they're always a blessing. So we continue on, and I shared a bit with you last week about Abraham and how Abraham was promised by God to become the father of a great nation. And becoming this father of a great nation, that nation was promised a promised land. So we covered a little bit how God's timing is not quite what we think it should be. And that indeed, Abraham never got to see that promised land. And he never saw his descendants become a great nation so God passed that promise on to his son, Isaac. And as a matter of fact, when Isaac went and he was living as a foreigner in a strange land and he was searching for a wife, that God told him, stay there because this was the promised land. And so Isaac stays. However, Abraham's descendants had not come to the place of being a great nation. So, wasn't quite fulfilled just yet. And don't we feel like that quite a bit? That God's promises aren't quite as fulfilling as we think they should be? And a lot of times we forget that our world, our day-to-day -day lives, is so very small compared to the things of God. I mean, think about it. I mean, Abraham was just a single man. And from that single man, an entire nation was going to come to be. And we today, I am a U.S. citizen. I can't even imagine what the population of the United States is right at this moment. But I'm a very small piece of a very big thing. And we forget that, that God's view is much broader, wider, deeper, and way bigger than what our view is. And God's timing of all the things that he promises and all the things that he plans are way different than the way we do things. Because we look at things in the context of our own lifetime. 120 years is what the Bible says that we will be given. 
So if we said, I plan on living until I'm 120, which I really don't think I will, but if that was my number, then I would only live within those 120 years. And in biblical days, they actually thought about the next generation way more than we do today. The next generation is, eh, they can take care of themselves. And that's not the way it's supposed to be. And God's promises cross over from generation to generation to generation to our generation right now. Whatever generation you may be in, according to us. But those promises still stand. And they still exist. And so Abraham's promise gets passed along to Isaac. And Isaac lives his life in this place that God has told him to stay, that God says this is going to be the promised land. This is it. But yet Abraham hasn't created the nation yet. That kind of rests a little bit on Isaac having plenty of kids. But there's only so many kids he can have. So, time passes. As a matter of fact, a thousand years pass. And those descendants of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, well, they become slaves. They become imprisoned by Pharaoh and their lives are no longer their own and they're in a strange land and God remembering his promise and bringing things back into line so that they can be fulfilled sends Moses to Pharaoh thousand years of time and then God again bringing the nation of Israel the people out of slavery in Egypt and to the promised land now mind you again it takes them 40 years to get to the promised land and the older generation that came out of Egypt, out of that slavery, had all passed away. And it is the new generation, the new generation who only knew the wandering to find the promised land, are the ones that enter the promised land. Well, isn't that something? The timing of God is not for us to deem appropriate, right, or wrong. But it is for us to look at and wonder what promises from long ago did God make that God might be fulfilling right now? And certainly we still celebrate a promise God made to redeem His people, His people, and that includes all believers. But to redeem his people from the very first promise that they broke. Not to eat of the tree of knowledge. And to take away the curse of death. So that we could live eternally with our Lord and God. A gift. A promise fulfilled. And we all receive the benefits of that blessing. So that promise keeps on. So our promises of God are not set to our timetable, but by God's timetable. And we need to be grateful for such a thing because God always remembers his promises. And next week, we'll look at the promises God has made to his church, the body of believers in this day and age now. So see you next week. Amen.
Jesus taught us to speak of hope as the coming of God's kingdom. We believe that God is at work in our world, turning hopeless and evil situations into good. We believe that goodness and mercy will triumph in the end. One day all tears will be wiped away, the lamb will lie down with the lion, and justice will roll down like a mighty stream. True peace and true reconciliation are not only desired, they are assured, promised, and guaranteed in Christ. This is our faith. This is our hope. Amen. O Lord, our Shepherd and God, come close to us now. Come near us in our time of need. We need you, Lord, in our time of anxiety and uncertainty. We need you to bind our wounds and pour your healing ointment on our heads. Shepherding God, guide us with your voice. Help us to listen and follow, no matter where your voice leads. Help us to trust you. May all of our prayers serve your will and show your love. We pray, Lord, for the people and circumstances that weigh on our hearts and minds. We pray for Shepherd in God, thank you for hearing our prayers. Thank you for your Son, who laid down his life for those who follow him, and for those who are not in the fold yet. Lord, we pray for those who don't know the Shepherd whose life circumstances kept them from knowing the Good Shepherd. We pray that by our actions, our behavior, and our reaching out into the community, they may come to know you as the Good Shepherd. Holy God, renew us. Guide us with your love and renew us with your peace. Amen.
Generous God and giver of all things, we rest in your loving and tender care, and we are revived, restored, and renewed by your strength and encouragement. You go before us in life, leading us on pathways that are secure, aware only that we need to follow you. And so we trust in your guidance and wisdom. As human beings, we know there will be times of stress and times of darkness. 
when life will seem to be nothing but a struggle. And it is in those times that we rely on your Holy Spirit to guide and bless us. Grace-giving God, you provide us with the tools we need for the task we face. And for this, we give you our trust and our thanks. Life-giving God, you nourish our souls and bodies through your goodness and tender mercies. You heal our life's wounds. And your generous love fills us to overflowing. You give us an honored place at your table and invite us to stay with you as your guest forever. You have promised that your unfailing love will stay with us always. And for this, we give you our thanks. May we go out into this world, Lord, and share all that you have given to us. May we be the hands and the feet of you, our good shepherd. Amen. Go now with your trust in the Good Shepherd and let us love, not just in words, but in truth and action. Believe in the name of Jesus Christ and love one another just as he has commanded us. And may God be at your side, even in the valleys of death. May Christ Jesus be the cornerstone of your life. And may the Holy Spirit abide in you and tend you with love and mercy all the days of your life. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, amen.